The Mats, Matt Harvey and Matt Miller. And via telephone, Delegate Chuck Hurst joins us. Chuck, good morning to you, buddy. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Excellent, thank you. How are you and your roomie doing down there? Oh, uh, he snored a lot last night, so I didn't sleep so well. Oh. But uh, <laughs> sometimes so, that makes sorry, for yeah. a long day. You know, my wife does, uh, Chuck. She has uh, one of those uh, sound machines, like you can uh-huh. waves or nature or whatever, and she uh-huh. and she puts that on to drown me out some nights. Well, my wife has a little different method. She just generally el- elbows me really hard or shoves me out of bed. <laughs> I got that once. I did get a kick one. One, I'm like, oh, what, what happened? Yeah. What's all that about? She's. I thought she was going to like old Joe Pesci on me or something like that. Uh, Chuck, your picture was on the Metro News website the other day. Oh my! What happened? Did you see it? <laughs> no, I did not. Oh wow! Usually it's Hornby who gets his face on there all the time, but uh, but yours was on there, and it had to do with the uh, the consideration of this library bill with the attempt to remove uh, certain materials from libraries and the, uh, the penalties that would be instituted uh, for violations of that. Can you tell us about that, Bill? You know what? I'm not so sure I'm very familiar with that, oh. Bill. Am I a host? I don't know if I'm even a co-sponsor, am I? I don't nothing I know of, no. But your face, you, when they showed the picture of the bill being considered, you're, you're front and center on that, man. <laughs> they had public, oh, man. public debate I'm not, yesterday. I'm not, quite, yeah. I'm not quite sure why they've why, why, why they done that. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm 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 I'm, I, I'm drawing a blank on what the bill really is. I mean, I, I think I've, I've heard a little bit about it, but I'm not very familiar with it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I don't think it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm sure it hasn't been in a committee that I'm in. Um, That's okay. Yeah, I, I, you may you may yeah, be asked I, I, to vote on it uh, in the near future, possibly if it makes yeah. it that far. Yeah, yeah it's, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm sure I will. I, and and oh, okay, that that is the bill they had that public hearing on the other day. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I heard a few people talk a little bit about that. Uh, that uh, I don't know. Some somebody brought up some excerpts out of a book or something that mm-hmm. was kind of kind of controversial. I guess I'll say. Indeed. <clears throat> yeah. In in general, uh, your thoughts on uh, on a bill like that, and I think we can all agree we don't want eight year olds wandering into a library and reading sexually explicit material. Uh, what and, what. And, I think some of that stuff is really a no-brainer, Rob. I don't even know. I, it, it seems bizarre to me that we even have to have these discussions on, on, on things like that. Uh, and, you know, I, I liken it to we, we saw, especially I, I think it was Loudoun County a lot there with the school boards and what have you, with, with people having, having issues with some of the books in those libraries, and they were going to board meetings, and they would try to read excerpts out, 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 of, out of some of these books. And, and the board would shut them down because because of what what was being read. Uh, that was clearly inappropriate and clearly inappropriate for to be available to 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 young children. Chuck, what would be? And this is obviously something that you're not uh, specifically debating right now. But uh, and it's not. I don't even know how likely it is that a bill would be passed involving this. But if it is. Uh, they're discussing punishment for this, and some of that could be uh, for the librarian a twenty-five thousand dollar fine, uh, jail time, uh, that sort of thing. Some of that would seem to be a bit excessive, uh, just on first uh, reading of hearing what those consequences might be. Or you might, you know, miss a book, or someone might interpret a book one way versus another way. Uh, but what what do you think would be appropriate in terms of removing those type of books? And who would be in charge of determining what that material would be that's objectionable? Well, um, I, I, I guess it probably would take a number of people, like some sort of a board or something, to determine uh, uh, what what would be objectionable, I think. Um, John Hardy's trying to call me right now. <laughs> he's so mad at you because you said he snores. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, um, yeah, I think it would take some kind of a board. I think you want to have a number of a, a number of people looking at looking at those things and uh, making those decisions. I believe, um, and 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 of course, eight. I guess age is going to have a lot to do with it as to you know what what age certain things would be available to. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
And as far as punishment, yeah, the, the, yeah, the twenty five thousand dollars sounds like quite a bit, but I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe open it up to uh, 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 somebody's job being on the line. Uh, maybe open it up to um, uh, civil repercussions from from parents uh, for some sort of damages if their children are exposed to it. Just kind of off the top of my head thoughts. I want to ask you about some of the sponsored bills that uh, you're the lead sponsor on. Uh, one I'm reading off your page here, HJR 14, amend the state constitution to give the people the powers of initiative, referendum, and recall. Uh, yes, and um, um, that's actually a, a, a old resolution that uh, John Everton had worked on before, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I take it had been vetted a few times and some changes made to it over time, and uh, um, I believe in large part it's a good idea. And so I've, I've reintroduced uh, that old uh, resolution that uh, John Everton had worked on, um, especially uh, especially the recall aspect of it for, I, I, I would say, for constitutional officers and, and, and uh, uh, um, say, say, U.S. Senate, um, maybe even House Senate I'm, or uh, State Senate, but uh, House members... House members and our Congress members, uh, you know, the the voters really do get to say on, on them every two years. So it's not like it's a, a a long-term thing where you get somebody that's in office and all of a sudden they're they're against the will of the people. Also, so, uh, yeah, a couple other bills ahead. that your lead sponsor on too include uh, increasing the homestead exemption to fifty thousand dollars and creating thirty-four single-member senatorial districts, which I know a couple people have tried to. Uh, help get uh, moving through this year with some momentum. Let's talk yeah, about the homestead um, exemption first, Chuck. Okay, the, the homestead exemption, um, uh, I, I think that's just the, the right thing to do because that's, that's for our more elderly residents. And especially in our area, with, with the cost of everything and uh, housing costs going so high, and, and when housing costs goes up, uh, we have residents that live in uh, – Quite you know, quite a few residents live in older homes that have lived in the in the county for many many years, and now they're on fixed incomes and they're seeing their uh, personal property taxes skyrocket because uh, the the appraised value of their home, and uh, it would it would raising it to fifty thousand would just simply be. This was instituted, I think it was in the seventies or very early eighties. So when you look at inflation between then and now. 50000 would just be bringing it up to account for about what the inflation has been over that period of time. All right. And then the second is, aspect. Can, can well, I ask a question about that? Yeah, go right ahead. Yes. Sure. Is, is that a uh, that $50,000 exemption, is that across the board, all 55 counties? Yes, that would be that would be the intent. And I think I see where you're going with that, too, uh, is uh, it would be uh, – uh, many counties, uh, the, those residents would have probably a, a, a much bigger uh, uh, advantage than what than what they would in in, in say Berkeley County, uh, so, simply because the values aren't as high, and uh, you'd knock fifty thousand off off their assessed value, uh, they would get a, a much bigger basically tax break than what Berkeley County would. But I don't know how you would do that because it's in the Constitution. I don't know that you could even begin to do that to where it be different from one county to another. Okay. Is there a physical note on that? I don't know if a physical note's been looked at on it yet. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's some sort of uh, – well, no, no, it wouldn't be a state fiscal note because that would be county taxes. Right, it would reduce some counties' taxes. Yes. Okay. And to to be quite honest with you, there's probably not going to be the appetite. The counties will probably fight against it, I suspect. Uh, but, um, you know, it, I put it out there for, for consideration. And that current number now is 20 or 25? Uh, 20, if I recall correctly. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's exactly what it was when that exemption was first uh, put into the Constitution. That was probably 1923, 33, somewhere in the beginning. No, no. I, I, I think I think it, when I researched that, I think it was in the late seventies or early eighties okay. or something like that, if I recall correctly. A twenty thousand dollar home in nineteen twenty three would have been quite. Well, the I mean, it, it hasn't been adjusted in fifty years. 
No, it hasn't. So half a century it hasn't been adjusted. That, Just like the income tax rates. I mean, I, I think I think it should be adjusted or for the, whatever it's worth. Or the limits, yeah. I should say. Uh, now the 34 single-member senatorial districts. Chuck, we went with uh, single-member districts in the House uh, recently. Why should we do it in the Senate? Well, I think it's kind of intriguing. I, I, I think it, uh, it it probably will do a number of things. It would... It would lower some costs as far as running for campaigning for for, for that office, um, and it would put the senators a little bit closer to the people that they represent, uh, with their districts uh, basically being uh, smaller. You know, uh, number of constituents would be less per district. How many people are behind this, Chuck? I'm not sure. I know uh, I haven't really talked to many or or, or really pushed this one too hard. Uh, but but I do know there's uh, there's others that have talked about it before, and I think there's some others that have introduced something as well. Are there a lot of multi senatorial districts across the state? They're, they're all. They're all. Yeah. Okay, Seven, so they all are. seventeen of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two per district, seventeen. Districts. So two per district. Okay. Yes, yeah, so and hey, what is and that? That's what about a hundred and eight hundred ten. Population representation for each senatorial district. Um, I forget the number. It might. I think it's a little bit higher than Maybe that. But yeah, it's certainly over 100k. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and and I would I would add that that those senators uh, in those districts each each election cycle you have one of them up for election. So so they're 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 staggered. Chuck, let's talk about House Bill 4825, aimed at changing the current status, which allows for a search on private land without a warrant under the current statute. A large amount of the private land in West Virginia falls under an exception called the Open Fields Doctrine. Tell me about this. Uh, you guys debated yeah. it yesterday. Yes, yeah, so Open open Field Doctrine, it's a, it's 100 years old this year. It was uh, first done by the U.S. Supreme Court in 1924. Uh, and, and the gist of it was that uh, they ruled that the Fourth Amendment does not apply to one's property outside the home and the curtilage immediately around the home because nobody has a reasonable expectation of privacy in open fields uh, that, that one could view from, say, a public position, a, a public road. You could look into an open field. And, and I think we would all agree that, yeah, there's probably not an expectation of privacy there. But uh, the open fields actually encompasses all of one's property. And um, uh, it's been it, – it, it was looked at again in 1967, Cats v. USA, and uh, – that Supreme Court's opinion came back a little differently, and, and that decision was that if somebody done something that showed they expected privacy on their property, then it would require a warrant to search said property, and that would be like if you had to, your property fenced, posted, uh, things along that kind of line would show that you had, a, had an expectation of privacy. And then you fast forward to 19. 19- 84, I believe it was, uh, Oliver v. USA. Um, that was another case dealing with open fields, and that court's opinion went straight back to nobody has a reasonable expectation of privacy on their property or op- the open fields doctrine. Uh, so, so even the Supreme Court has been back and forth on this issue. Um, there's, I believe, nine states that do not recognize the open fields doctrine. Uh, per their Supreme Court's uh, decisions, that their constitutions uh, give that protection to uh, the people. Uh, it can be done in statute, and that, that's what my that's what this bill aims to do: is put it in statute that that uh, the people's property would have to uh, would, would require a warrant to be searched. And that would all. There's also language in there that includes. Uh, 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 drones as well, use of drones to search property, and um, uh, that, that's the gist of it. It's, it's really kind of a it's really kind of a bill that I I, I think the people of West Virginia uh, expect privacy on their property, and uh, and and I and I, and I think they should have that, uh, especially when you consider the state motto, Montani Semper uh, uh, Libri, 
uh, Mountaineers are always free. And, and I, I, I kind of look at that, and I'm like, well, are we really? When when we pay taxes on our property year after year, and, and there, we cannot even keep a state agent off of our property if we choose that they – that we want that privacy. Matt Harvey, give me the legal perspective on this as an, an attorney. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'd rather ask questions with Elliot Horst because I, I wasn't prepared to talk about this. But um, I mean, what do you mean legal perspective on this? Like my opinion on it? Yes, you're an attorney. Uh, give me the. I, I would guess that most people, if you ask them, if they knew what their private property rights were, would probably not be aware of what Delegate Chuck Hurst is saying can happen on your property. I haven't. I haven't read the bill. I haven't reviewed the bill. That's fair. So, but but I, I, I but I think I can get there by asking them some questions. Sure, right ahead. And, and general and sometimes when bills are introduced. Um, Delegate, as you're well aware, there's a, there's a there's an incident or a series of incidents that cause a a, a, a notice of a need for a bill. Uh, is that the case in this with this particular bill? Well, uh, sort of. How, however, uh, I'm not really aware of uh, of, of any uh, cases other than one that council talked about the other day. Uh, that were specifically West Virginia. Uh, what brought this to my attention is, is cases in other states, uh, namely Tennessee and, of course, Virginia and Pennsylvania, uh, to name a couple. And um, that's what brought it to my attention. And, and, and I realized, and, and, and prior to that, I had no idea that my, pro- my pr- private property was subject to search for any and or no reason whatsoever uh, by, by state agents or, or, or law enforcement. Um, I, I will add that testimony from uh, state police, because I had a similar bill last year, state, uh, testimony from state police, they, they, they talked about that, uh, that, that in circumstances of, of search and property that they would get a warrant, which sounded more like it's a policy kind of thing from the state police. And the uh, Sheriff's Association testified the, basically the same way. Uh, now, Department of Natural Resources Police, they, uh, they are probably the primary ones that just go onto private property when, if, or, or for, for whatever reason. And I, I, just find, I just find the idea that I, I, I find it abhorrent that, that uh, law enforcement can just uh, come snoop around on my property and even place uh, surveillance cameras even. Uh, and, and that's the case that grabbed my attention. That's what that one was about. That was where they placed surveillance cameras on a guy's farm. Um, does it apply to helicopters? You, no, you mentioned drones. Apply. Yeah, it would, would not apply to helicopters. Uh, you, you have that airspace of, uh, where, where the uh, uh, FAA, I guess, uh, has that airspace of 400 feet and above. So it, it really wouldn't apply to uh, helicopters. It would apply to drone usage and drone usage under 400 feet correct correct because you can't you can't because you uh, don't because Virginia doesn't own above 400 feet is what you're saying yes that, that, that's my understanding yeah okay. FFA, faa controls that airspace airspace of 400 feet and above that doesn't um, seem very high 400 feet no it's, it's, it's not very high <laughs> but i'm i'm pretty certain that, that it's 400 feet if i recall correctly Depends if you're um, an airplane or a hot air balloon. Yeah, yeah. Well, for, yeah. If you if you're climbing a ladder, 400 feet. Plenty really, high. But if you're it, <laughs> 30 feet, plenty high on a ladder. Uh, yeah, so it, it, it's all perspective, I guess. There. Oh, well, absolutely, Matt Miller. Well, oh, good. Matt, well, I was just going to say, what were you know talking about the counter arguments? Did the police say that this would hinder their ability to respond to crime and be proactive? Is that their counter argument? Well, that, that's that's uh, really natural resources police counter, counter argument, and um, uh, it it really doesn't do that because there's uh, there's there's court cases, I guess, extension circumstances that 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 apply in many of the situations that that they that they describe or would talk about that it would hinder them. Uh, so uh, you know, in those type cases. Uh, you know, they, they can go on the property. And actually, the, the language in this bill, uh, really, it simply states, it, it doesn't really restrict them from being on the property, so to speak. 
it restricts a search of the property. So uh, it's it's not like it's a law that says that ah, nope, you're totally forbidden from being on a property. So um, well, it, I imagine in Southern West Virginia, where a lot of the the land is owned by out of state corporations, does how and, and the people freely use the land as public land. You know, is there has it been some thought about how to deal with out of state interests that own property, but maybe they're just they have a tree farm, so they're not checking on it, or they they own the land because they want to maybe potentially get to the minerals underneath. And does this keep police officers from if they they suspect that some sort of someone has like a meth lab or something? From well, what, there's. There's, there's, there's a number of things. I mean, if they suspect there's a meth lab, they probably have some sort of reason to suspect that. Probably could go get a warrant to search the property, uh, and and also there's there's exemptions in the bill that uh, you know property owners can give permission. Matt Miller, which, which uh, a lot of those large landholders, uh, I, I suspect uh, that that what many of them would do is they would give uh, law enforcement or Natural Resources Police, uh, the authorization to patrol or watch over those properties. If they authorities are looking for something in particular and coming onto the property, should they find something that they were looking for without a warrant? Is is that evidence good? I mean, or or would they then go back and get a warrant based on things that they found? Well, I I, I would I would think, and, and I'm not an attorney. But I would think that they would have to go get a warrant before that evidence could be made good, um, and 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 that would that would that that would be I, I guess the the uh, end result of this of this legislation is if law enforcement had done a search and came up with something that uh, you know the courts would be able to throw that out uh, because it was an illegal search. Generally, if a police officer is in a, in a place that they're allowed to be in, and they see evidence of a crime, they can act on that under the plain view doctrine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, and that's and, and these are all very general rules that are f- facts specific and can change. <laughs> By the way, thank you for muddying yeah, the um, waters. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. That's the way the law is written, <laughs> right? The law is well, always was, written with an ounce. Well, if it was clear, then you know anybody could do it, and it's job protection. Laws are written by attorneys, and they always leave some type of little uh, oh, something open to interpretation. Well, it's yes. not. It's not intentional. It's just yeah, human it being. It's not intentional. <laughs> they, they create, as you said, it creates it's more not. work for other attorneys. It's what uh, you guys' way of continuing to be employed. No, that's not true. Says so an attorney. And, 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 and in all fairness to attorneys. With, with 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 writing this stuff they're 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 kind of tasked with uh uh many things trying trying to protect people's rights and 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 trying to uh uh make make things so that they're workable so that so that we don't have uh, anarchy i guess chuck just a couple yeah. of minutes left i know are, are are there some other major issues that are are uh, kind of on your thought and and on your radar right now uh nothing too much that i've really been involved in i've spent a lot of my time this session so far in committee meetings um well chuck let let me ask you about hb 4920 to create the felony offense for swatting another individual uh jb mccuskey the state auditor was involved in a situation recently where he thought that there was a scenario unfolding at his daughter's school and he rushed to it and it turned out that was in basically a, a fake situation but tell me about your bill and, and how you would do this. Yes, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's becoming a a, 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 a rather interesting thing, and, and and the bill would just simply create a, create a crime to deal with that. Uh, and and what really what really piqued my interest in in, in doing this was the the other week when uh, uh, a number of U.S. Congress members uh, had been swatted, uh, where somebody had called law enforcement and. Uh, uh, said I, and I don't know what what's swatting. Said, but, uh, basically, Please. that would be uh, uh, calling law enforcement or first responders, uh, reporting false information 
to have them respond to what is usually going to look like a, a, a uh, very dangerous situation, like uh, somebody holding somebody hostage with with a gun and a domestic violence issue, issue uh, something along that kind of line, okay. where, where where law enforcement responds in force uh, and on very, very thin edge, expecting uh, very bad things to happen, which which could easily push law enforcement to actually actually shoot somebody uh, yeah. simply by mistake because, you know, they're coming there on high alert, and then somebody reaches for their pocket to pull out their wallet or, 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 or whatever the case may be. And, and, you know, law enforcement's thinking they're going for the gun then. It, it, uh, it creates a very, very dangerous situation for law enforcement and, and the people that are being swatted, actually. Yeah, because that person has no clue what's going on. Why are you guys here? What, what is the situation? I didn't call. Nobody around me called. And so, yeah, it's got to be an extremely dangerous situation for all involved. Are there not some kind of laws already in place as far as filing a false report? Or, or are they just so soft in what the penalties are that, that what you're looking at would, would expand on those penalties? I, I would say that they're so soft that uh, – to deal with this type of situation, the penalties are not strong enough, and this bill this bill makes it a felony. Uh, so there's there's some pretty good teeth in it. Yeah, there's uh, a misuse of 911, which is a, a misdemeanor, it, but it's that could be for just someone calling and hanging up 911. This is mm-hmm. seems like this is a little goes a little further yeah. and, and reports yeah. a crime to, These are planned setups. To, to get the response. Chuck, yeah. in any of your um, research and investigation and in helping to put this together, did you find uh, numbers as far as like are, are many times the people that are responsible for this swatting caught or is it kind of like scam calls? We never know where they come from. There's some of everything. Okay. <laughs> there's, uh, uh, there, there's a local fellow there in Jefferson County, uh, Tim can't remember his last name right now. He does he does a podcast, and uh, he had been swatted several times. And if I recall correctly, that one the the call the calls originated out of California, uh, which I thought kind of bizarre. But I guess the podcast, you know, he well, could we have somebody had those, upset in California. We about had those instances at the schools that he talks about, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. We had two of them. Chuck, we got to go. I appreciate your time this morning. Have yourself a great day, and call Mr. Hardy back. He's trying to reach you. <laughs> Maybe I'll just beat on the wall. I think he might still be here. <laughs> oh, even better. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. All right. Good day. Delegate Chuck Hurst at 902 on Talk Radio WRNR Martinsburg and TV 10.